What's up guys, Sean from SRK Cycles and Bikes and Beards. We tracked down the first motorcycle I ever rode. It had been abandoned in a garage. It had been forgotten and abandoned for 13 years. They were gonna pay someone to haul it away because it wasn't worth fixing. Me and my friend Craig have eight hours and a budget of $100 to get this bike running and on the road. Let's do it. Come on, let's go find Craig. Hey! What's happening? Not much. How you doing? Good to see you. It's a cool shot, man. Thanks, dude. Well, cool. So let's, uh, let's get the bike off the truck and on the trailer yeah. and then on the lift see and then we'll get we this thing figured out. So first thing, we're going to put, take the battery out. See if we can get this thing to crank over. That's number one. If it's not cranking over, we have to figure out why it's not cranking over, and then we gotta work our way back from there. All right, so we got the new battery. We have a new battery in. That battery's good, right? Yeah. Let's see what happens when we crank to turn the key. Mm, nothing. Nothing. Always a good sign. Oh, all hey. right. Oh, there we go. Alright. Uh, fixed it. What, uh, what we got we... some wiring issues. Is a relay that's kind of like falling out or something like that? or Yeah. Or is it it's dead? It's in there. So the starter solenoid is being goofy. We're trying to clean it. Uh, cause I'm not sure if we can replace it right now. So we gotta get this thing running ASAP. Let's see if we can get this thing uh, starting. All right, so we got the uh, the starter solenoid to intermittently work. I think we're, we're tracking one down. Did he have yep, one? Yep, yep. He has one. All right, he's got one, so we're going to replace it. But we did get it to intermittently work. Let's see if it cranks over. All right, let's All crank right. it over. So, so we know everything up until right there is working. Is it getting spark? I've got, do you have a spark plug out over there? Uh, I don't have one out. I have out. plugs off. Yeah, I just want you, have a, you have a real spark tester over here? Yeah, what this this will do is I can adjust the gap. So it'll kind of give me an idea of, of the strength of the spark. Spark seems strong. So we got one of the three things that we need to get this bike running. Spark, compression, pizza. Kind of want to hit it with some... Fuel. Uh, So what we proved is that this thing, it's getting spark, it runs, it has compression, it's got, it has fuel because we're, we're shoving fuel right down the cylinders through the intake. We do not know if the carburetor works, but we're gonna try, get it to run off its own fuel from the carburetor, see if we can get this thing to fire up and run. If we can, this is gonna be a huge success and this is not gonna be that big of a deal. Maybe? Maybe. Maybe. So this thing has been sitting for about 10 years in someone's garage. The chances of it running on its own fuel through the carburetors. Pretty slim. Pretty slim. Pretty slim. It is an amazing motorcycle though. Let's see. Let's see what happens. Try it again. So this is the first time this motorcycle has ran in 13 years. This is a huge moment. We're pretty, this, pretty optimistic about this exciting. build. Yeah, yeah, everything's going well so far. So the intake's filling up with fuel. 
I'm not exactly sure why it's doing it. All right, so I think somehow I lost Craig's flashlight. Not cool, man. Not cool. No, that's. Oh, here it is. This one? No, that one's Craig. My most important tool is my flashlight, and three minutes into this project, Sean loses it. I was looking for that flashlight for like 20 minutes. So I found it later that night in my pocket. So part of the added difficulty with old bikes is you don't know who was messing with it before, and, and you find stripped hardware. I mean, I guess if we break that cover, it's not a huge deal. Yeah, well, we're gonna well, try the, to the do it. The bottom one's Phillips? Yeah, but that's stripped too. Of course. It's not even neat. Just a, just a little extra chrome on the bike. We spent three hours working on that. It doesn't even do anything. So we're gonna get this air intake box off. Give enough space to disconnect the carbs. This thing probably has not moved since. Since so. March of 82. That's 37 years. Goal is I want to be able to ride this to California tonight. 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 Cool. What time are you leaving? You gotta be in California tomorrow at 10. Yeah. <laughs> you get this out. You get pizza. Well earned pizza. There we go. Come on. We got this. Just about. We got this. There we go. There we go. Ah! There we go. Caleb and Harrison putting them back in? Yes. Not us. This thing's gonna be a, a rip up when we're done. See, the problem I always get into with stuff like this, I can get it out. I may have broken a few things. I'll deal with them later. I can clean the carb to what I think is good, and I can put them in, and maybe one out of 10 times it actually works the way I think it will. Normally, I, you know, I spend 12 hours putting it out, cleaning it, putting it back in, and it doesn't run any better. That's frustrating. And then I hate my life. Yeah. I'm not doing it again. Right. You know what I mean? Like, it's, <laughs> not, it's, not, it's not happening <laughs> again. That's what it is with, like, well, you know what these were like to pull out of the bike. Like, we are gonna get them right the first time. We're not pulling them back out. <laughs> <laughs> Uh. Well, Craig, when did you start wrenching on bikes? I've kind of been doing it my whole life. I guess I officially started doing it kind of part-time back in uh, somewhere around 2006. Uh, part-time went full-time uh, beginning of 2018. So this is my second year. What did you go to college for? Uh, ag business. Got a business degree from Del Valle. Then went to uh, MMI for I did Honda and uh, Suzuki. And then you ride a KTM. And ride a KTM. Like a, like a jerk. I was putting air in the tires and I accidentally broke the valve stem and then I had to take the tire back off, put a new valve stem on there and then put it back on the bike. All right, so I finally got the, the tire back on. We found out the back brakes really don't work, but we're gonna get it running first and then deal with that. Craig's over there putting the carburetor together. I'm gonna start bleeding the brakes. It looks like we did start some type of coolant leak up here. Craig's over here, he's got the rebuild kit and he's put everything back together. And Craig assures me it's gonna be perfect and it's gonna run like a, what was your exact words, Craig? It's gonna run like a what? Like a banshee. Banshee. It is 545. 545. Well, I just got done bleeding both brakes, both sides. And this is the nasty looking brake fluid I took out of it. So flush the whole system out. That's running good. I mean, I, it could be better, but it's it's good enough stuff. Whatever. Greg, how are we doing over here? Doing good, man. I don't want to put these things together twice. Do you have any uh, blinker fluid? <laughs> nice. Cause uh, you should put like a bit of fish in there. I can't. <laughs> it does work. Does it? Yeah. Nice. It's amazing. All right, so I just got these handlebars turned down the way they should be, which flattens this thing out. Brake fluid reservoir. Um, that flattens that out instead of sitting up like this. And we got that all cleaned out. Craig, you're making a lot of noise over here. What's going on? I'm trying to get these slides to work. 
All right, so now we're about to put, put, put the carburetor back in. We just got the carburetor completely in. Now we're just tightening up all the little, uh, the little boots. We gotta put a thing on here. We gotta put a thing on the back. 10 more minutes, we'll be firing this thing up, riding wheelies, doing awesome stuff. Craig, got anything to say? I don't at the moment. <laughs> all right, so I think we're uh, ready to try starting this thing. Put coolant in there, oil's topped off. It's gonna be running the fuel off of this. Carburetor clean. Let's see if we can get this thing to fire up. Okay, that'll do it. Classic. All right, so we had the, we had the uh, fuel off. Let's see how it works with the fuel. Oh, that's on. Yeah. So it's leaking fuel pretty badly. Not sure where it's coming from though. So it is 7.30 and my wife wants me to call her two hours ago. The one carb started just dumping out fuel out of the float bowl. We're going to pull the carbs completely out enough that we can, that we can pull, that, pull that float, uh, the float bowl off and see what's going on. So there's your problem. I forgot to put the uh, forgot to put the seal in there. It was pouring out like there was no seal in it. Yeah, you know, it was. We were just dumping out like man. You like either either uh, the seal was super pinched or just well, wasn't well, in there. Or wasn't there? Yeah, I'm such an idiot. To give you to give you credit, uh, around that time, Craig's wife came in and uh, holding food. So didn't make it easier to focus. So while Craig's putting that back together, here's a reason, here's a lesson for you guys who are working on older bikes. And here's the reason why 99% of older bikes get started will never get put back on the road. And it's because they're not troubleshooting properly. You know, you gotta figure out, is it put, put some battery to it, does it start, if it doesn't start, what's the next thing? The pro and the problem is what people start doing is they start fixing and replacing everything else. They're like, oh, this looks kinda bad, maybe I'll get one new one of these. They start cutting it out, they, they, start, they throw it away, and they start, they start diving into things that they, they don't need to start. If it's not broken, don't fix it. Figure out what you gotta fix to get the bike started. And that's where you work your way. Once you have a running bike, then you can start changing things and fixing things. But when you're diving into stuff you don't know about and the electrical problems, if you unplug one wire, go start the bike up. Make sure it runs without that wire. If it doesn't, plug that wire back in and don't touch it again. But this is why most people when they're doing bike projects and old, you know, what they call uh, basket cases and stuff like that, they never get the bike to run right. First, they wanna make it look good and then they try to get to run right. By that point, you're missing parts and you don't know what you're missing because it's gone and it's just never gonna, it, you might as well throw it away, honestly. This right here is why Craig is the man. You guys see that? The stupid new gas cans. They don't have any breathers. Bam. We just took the little thing out. <laughs> That's your breather. That's amazing. <laughs> it's 8.30. It's, ba it's back in. <laughs> this is it. It's happening right now. Let's do this. We did it, man. We did it. That's running well. That sounds awesome. This bike has not idled, ran, moved on its own power at all in the past at least decade. I was sing I was a single man the last time this bike rode. All right, so it is 9:20. We got the bike running pretty good. I got the brakes working. Back brakes, nah, nah, not so much. The clutch is nothing. And it is a hydraulic clutch, so the brake, the fluid and everything else was horrible. It needed to be bled. Craig pulled this cover off. And we saw, what? Yo, what? <laughs> I've never seen that before in my life. Did someone dump sand? Yeah. No, that's just bad fluid. That's what it turns into over time. Well, well Craig, I know, I've, I've taken science class. It's a solid. It's, it's a solid. That's not a fluid. Wow, okay. That's gnarly. So that's why the clutch is not working anything. I, I'm gonna say that's your problem. So we got the stink bugs out of the motor. Clean right. this up, we should be all right. Let's suck all this out, blow it out. Let's put new fluid and the lines, I guess, I don't know. Wow. All right, so what we're gonna attempt, attempt to do, instead of bleeding it this way, we're gonna reverse bleed it. We're gonna push, use that fella yeah. to push the fluid up the system back out to push anything in the line, pop it out. So hopefully we'll see some fluid coming I'm, out of here. I'm building pressure. So while Craig 
is working on rebuilding the uh, clutch master cylinder. I'm trying to figure out why at the top of the uh, hydraulic line, and here's the bottom of the hydraulic line, the hydraulic fluid came out of here. I'm spraying air in one side and nothing's coming out the other side. My wife wants to know if I'm still alive. Yeah, yeah, I'm still alive. All right, so what we found out, this hydraulic line was clogged up. It's actually three parts. You got this part, you got a metal piece that goes in here, connects from here down to the, the, uh, the sleigh cylinder, which we have taken out. This is clogged up. I went and throw out some, sh shot some compressed air inside here to see if this, I can clear this out. This snotted all over everything. We gotta figure out how to unclog this thing and then we're gonna be in business. All right, so check this out. So we needed to find something that we could try to clean this thing, try to clean this hydraulic line uh, with. I, I, I tried putting air through it. I ended up using the MIG welder to, as the feed to run that through here and unclear this and then it started dripping out and now I got something through it. I'm gonna throw some air through here. This will be clean. This is gonna work. This, the clutch is gonna, I think it's gonna work, I don't know. We'll see, we'll see how Craig's doing on his side. <laughs> 10.52. The moment of truth. Third time cleaning this thing out. The uh... the seals were bad. I cleaned it once and then the seals were bad. Found some seals that are close. Kind of close. Kind of close. Might work. We'll see. Good sign, huh? Well, this is where we uh, call it a day. It's 11 o'clock. What do we got accomplished? We, we got the we got the brakes we got the front brake brake working we got the back brakes working yep. we got the turn signals working we got the um, carbs clean the carbs cleaned taken out put back in three times we got the bike running for the first time in at least a decade we got the uh, the whole hydraulic the the clutch hydraulic system completely cleared out except for where we we need a seal the, the, master the clutch cylinder. master cylinder lever the saddest feet yeah that's a bummer. <clears throat> I really thought we were going to be doing burnouts tonight. Yeah, here's the plus side, it runs. To most people, this bike was a piece of junk. Just a total piece of junk to the guy who, the guy we got it from said, everyone's like, there's no way it's worth, re it's worth fixing. We've done everything here. And then we had the tools, uh, we had the know-how. You, you can get the know-how if you have enough time. Uh, Craig happens to know everything, so we don't need time. We did all this stuff for probably less than, what, 80 bucks? Yeah. I mean, I stole a lot of Craig's stuff, so that might be a little bit more expensive, but no, we did all for less than 80 bucks. That's pretty, uh, that's pretty nuts. And what's the seal yeah. kit gonna cost? Uh, that's probably gonna cost us 40 bucks. 35, 40. 35 bucks. 35 oh, bucks. Yeah. And then we're doing wheelies, burnouts. All right, guys, if you've ever uh, worked on a bike before, if you've ever <laughs> come into problems like this, you overcame them, you didn't overcome them, you know, you have a bike sitting in your garage because of this, let us know, put it down in the comments. I'm Sean. I'm Craig. This is Craig. We'll see you guys later. Later. Don't forget to subscribe. We got a lot of work to do.